Pianist, and who in his spare time plays the clarinet in the City Literary Institute Wind Ensemble, should also in turn have been a window cleaner, jam jar sorter, and stooge for Abbott and Costello. All that before he found fame as one of television's best loved and hated characters, Alf Garnett. A warm welcome to all those people, Warren Mitchell. <laughs> Up in the interval. Oh, then. Oh, old friends. friends. Chaps. Yes. So, a quarter of a century is out, and now you're almost old enough to play him properly, aren't you? Next year I'll be 65. I've always thought of Alpha 65, and I will be 65. And I noticed George Cole got a whole picture in the Grawny ad last week when he was 65, and I hope I get the same next year when he, I become a pensioner, a real, a real one. Will you have a big party or just a glass of hemlock? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's got its compensations, being older. Um, not many, but... <laughs> <laughs> Are you becoming gracious and, and mellow? No. <laughs> no, I, I'm just slowing down. I mean, I, watching Elton firing on 19 cylinders there, I thought, oh, wow, you know, if I could only go like that. If I could go fast. And, you know, you, you live ten lives at once when you're like that. And, uh, no, I'm only living the one life at the moment. Slowly. I've actually persuaded the BBC with the new series that we started on to do it in a 10-day turnaround. But I, I can't do it in a week. I can't learn those massive speeches of Johnny's, which are wonderful. Specious reasoning at its very best. But they and you take... could before? Oh, blimey, I just sit up all night. I mean, we used to do them in four days, sometimes less. And they were more monologue then, because it was always, you know, I'd go on for four pages and then Tony Booth would say, what are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'll find out for another four pages. So, <laughs> it was, uh, I didn't get a lot of sleep in those days when we were doing it. And it was a weekly turnaround, and that was the way BBC... But they finally came round accepting the fact that I need a little consideration in my own. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do, do you, Sir Robin, think you've mellowed? Do you feel the passing of the years? Yes. Ah. Yes, <laughs> yes I can now get a... I can, unlike... Uh, Warren, I can now get a free bus pass and I can travel on buses free, and I, which I do with great pleasure. I produce my ticket like an FBI and say, follow that car, I get on the bus. <laughs> I'd ask you this, Ben, sorry, you don't qualify. No, it's been, been a little while, yeah. Alf is pushing 90. They still though. have the free buses when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> or any public <laughs> Alf, according to the way you have thought of his age, will be pushing 90, but he is perpetually 65. Well, he's about 65, yes. Oh, how has he changed? Well, I tell you how he's changed. In the new series, he's actually turned against Mrs. Thatcher. And that is really something. I mean, he never did like the idea of a woman in, the, in, the, in charge of his party. I mean, if, if Churchill was alive today, he'd turn in his bloody grave. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he actually has gone off her because... Well, the poll tax is one thing. I mean, I don't use the fire service, do I? I don't use the police force. I don't use the swimming baths, the library, none of it. I don't use... Why should I have to pay? <laughs> the fact that, of course, that he won't have to pay because he is... Uh, he doesn't have 16,000 pounds or 16,000 pennies, but uh, mm -hmm. he does... Um, through Johnny, I mean, he, he represents a large number of old-age pensioners in this country, in particular when Dandy Nichols was alive and I was wheeling around in a wheelchair having to push the wheelchair down the middle of the road because the cars were parked on the pavements. I got many letters from carers, from people looking after old age pensioners, and they became a sort of flagship. Um, Alf with his two driving mirrors on the, on the wheelchair and, <laughs> and the hooter. I don't, know, I don't know what you think of him personally. Do you, do you understand him more now that you're nearer that age? I've always understood him. I think... Uh, I've always admired people. I'm, I sit on the fence terribly. I've got a pain in the bottom sometimes from doing it. Uh, I love people who have very definite views and stick to them. He's an old, stupid bigot. But at times, because of Johnny's skill, he does say amazingly truthful things. I mean, uh, well, just imagine Harold Wilson, bloody national. Imagine him going and queuing up at the panel, Doctor. No, he's in a Rolls Royce down to Harley Street, which is true. Um, so... I don't remember what the question was now. I mean, <laughs> that's an 
Yeah, it's good old time as disease, Michael. <laughs> Worst thing is, I can't remember it either. No, it's so, good. Let's pass on to the next subject. Well, just whether you understood him more, but you've explained that. You, you were in the army, I think, weren't you? Air Force. Right? Yes. Life mm. full of... Uh, <laughs> well, I was going to say, life full of restrictions, but they were very easy in the Air Force, weren't they? But uh, were you, yeah. was it very repressive for you? Well, it, the, the Air Force wasn't repressive, but our social... I mean, girls, it was very difficult, you know what I mean? We had, there was no pill. So, <laughs> I mean, when, when, when you were, in, in the RAF, one longed to meet a, a rich, uh, sterile nymphomaniac. That was really <laughs> what one was hoping for. Because, so, I mean, at school, if you took a, if, if, when we were 15, I loved school, by the way. I went to an ordinary grammar school, local grammar school in Southgate. But if you took a girl to the pictures, and, and I mean, you, you might just get a finger inside the beginning of the bra. <laughs> And that was pretty un unbelievable. <laughs> if you actually touched the stop top of the stockings, Michael, that was whoa. <laughs> and anyone who said they'd been all the way was a liar. <laughs> yeah. So that was really well. We used to have these incredible heavy petting sessions, standing up, you know, in Winchmore Hill and leaning up against the dear girlfriend's front door. <laughs> and, well, and something else, but it was just. <laughs> I mean, and then having to run home with this terrible pain. I was an athlete. I was a... <laughs> so that was part of the... That, and, and it wasn't until, oh, many years later when, when uh, things changed that I, I, I actually found out what going all the way meant. <laughs> you were lucky, I used to think finger in the bra was going on. <laughs> That's it, virginity gone. <laughs> Is this getting a bit dirty, you? Oh, yeah. Boring. Oh, yeah. really? So, Robin, did you find that women found you dashing in uniform? Dashing? Yes. <laughs> I can't remember being in uniform. Oh, well, yes. No, I'd not particularly, no. No, just ordinary. Just, I don't think women are particularly affected by uniform. If they find someone attractive, that's that. They're not stupid. During well, the war... The Americans did very well with their uniform. Mm. Well, they did. <laughs> <they're laughs> <they're laughs> money. <laughs> During the war, it was very difficult. And the difficult. accent. Yeah. Mm. It was very difficult. I think. the chewing on, gum. Coming on leave. Uh, I won't say shut up. Just... <laughs> 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 You were, you were saying? Yeah, thank you so much. What was the question? <laughs> it was about uniforms, and it was a fact during the war when we came on leave, and we went, the Lyceum was a dance hall, the Covent Garden was a dance hall. And you went there, and it was, you would go up to a pretty girl, and, and you'd ask her to dance, and say, uh, no, I'm sitting this one out. Because, and she was waiting for a yank. And they had Hershey bars and silk stockings, and they were very courteous. I mean, they called them ma'am. And, I mean, we were pretty gauche, and I don't really blame them in retrospect for wanting to go with the yanks. But that was my first experience of impersonating somebody else, of characterization, because I went up to a girl and said, do you want to dance? And despite the lousy American accent, she did. And she said, you know, what's, um, what's American doing in the Air Force? I said, well, I was very conscious of how dilatory my country was and coming to the aid of Britain in her time of uh, travail. And that went down very well, and I scored immediately. And then I, <laughs> I got bored with the, with the Yank, and I killed him. And I was then, I was from Czechoslovakia. My family was slaughtered. Not with the same girl. girl. No, no, no. <laughs> But I did impersonate several people in that period, and it worked. And so I was always happiest when I wasn't being myself, and that's probably led to the fact that I'm a character actor, and I like wearing wigs and funny noses and limps and... <laughs> well, you need to wear a wig. Indeed. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, I do as Alpha appear egg-shaped, and, uh, and sometimes with a little hair, and sometimes with a, a lot of hair down the back, never on the top, except if I... You ought to play a high court judges, you ought to look good in that. Yes, yes. Well, but I, it's Alf is going to be a juror in the next series. It's going to be a good <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine the miscarriage of justice? <laughs> is he going to interrupt the judge? <laughs> We've thought about all that. We, we're not actually... Yeah, I can't tell you the plot. No, sure, it. sure. You are now officially an Australian citizen. Yes. Was that a very... Difficult decision. No, I, I've been a resident for many years, go, coming and going freely and working freely over there and loving the place and have most of my friends over there. Incidentally, I wouldn't pass the cricket test because I root for the, for the Poms every mm. time over there. And so do most of the other Poms over there. And it doesn't make them any less Australians. And that man really... 
Anyway, he yeah. nicked that idea. <laughs> he nicked that idea from, till, from In Sickness and Health. We had one episode about two series ago, some of you may remember, sitting in the, in the yard out the back of our, watching the cricket. It was England playing Pakistan. And there was the West Indian boy and the Pakistani. And I, was, I actually used this, this, this whole reasoning. Say, how can you call yourself English? You're supporting the other side. So it's not a new idea, he nicked it. That's what Tebbit got it from. Yes. Absolutely. The comparison seems well made to me, actually. Yes, well, well, now. Yeah. say Tebbit and Alf would get on very well. Yeah. Johnny, Johnny Spade's writing Tebbit speeches. That's mm -hmm. what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you, you first went over there with your one-man show, didn't you? What was the I went, reaction? I went there, there to do cabaret, and it was, you know, I mean, they, they, they reckon Alf's a hooligan, Alf's a galah like themselves, and they've had a few drinks and wanted to have a shot at him, you know. Mm -hmm. And I learned all the standard heckler stuff, you know. Why? So I bet you never learned to swim. You couldn't keep your bloody mouth shut long enough, could you? That's sort of <laughs> put down. But actually, that encourages them. They actually mm. used to come round afterwards and say, "Hey, I was the bloke who was chipping in." You know, they, mm. they really thought they were making the act for you. Whereas I've got Johnny Spate's wonderful script. I don't need their assistance. So, what I do now, <clears throat> when they start, is. I go faster in the script, over the top of them, and they say, Hi, Alan! And then they do it the third time, and the people next to them say, Shut up, you mug, you know, we don't want to listen to you. So, Robin, uh, Question Time has its own form of heckling. <laughs> yes, yes, but there were four people on the platform with, with me, and therefore one didn't quite know who they were heckling. They weren't usually heckling me. And there was very little heckling, because... <laughs> They, 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 they asked the question, but they weren't interrupting, and they were very well behaved. They didn't heckle. They Trouble is, I've come. got to be a heckler now and interrupt well, all of you. Well, there was one chap when well, Enoch Power was there, since you asked, <laughs> and, uh, that man had kept, called out bullshit. <laughs> and I looked at the ceiling, and I thought, well, we've got time to edit it out. <laughs> and, uh, and Enoch Powell said, uh, the gentleman is right. <laughs> it, is, it is bullshit. <laughs> And I'll explain why it is bullshit. <laughs> because bullshit means... And he went on and explained for about two minutes. No way could you cut it out. Mm. Well, I don't know what people would call this, and thank goodness we haven't got time to find out. Warren <laughs> Mitchell, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> and so Robin Day. And then, good luck with the play. Thank, thank you. you.